हेलो पीपल वेलकम और वेलकम बैक टू माई YouTube चैनल टूडेज वीडियो इज़ गोइंग टू बी अबाउट ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम सो लेट्स बिगेन इन टू दिस वीडियो यू मस्ट अंडरस्टैंड देर इज़ अ कंप्यूटर एंड देर इज़ अ यूज़र सो ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम इज़ एन इंटरमीडिएटर बिटवीन द यूज़र एंड द कंप्यूटर बेसिकली ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम हैज़ कंट्रोल टू ऑल द हार्डवेयर सो हैज़ टू परफॉर्म द बेसिक फंक्शंस that are needed for the computer to run it operating system have two parts one is shell other one is kernel kernel is a software that runs every time the computer is on so now let us discuss about what are the functions of operating system i am writing here number 1 is resource management resource management which means that for example there are so many processes that need to be run in the computer so it's a duty of operating system to allocate various resources efficiently to each and every process it is much needed in the case of multi processing for example parallel processing where so many processes need to come and perform their tasks so in that in that case operating system must manage the resources very very carefully number 2 is security security in the sense whenever we try to log in the device we are always asked about the username and the password that is because of the security functions of the operating system number 3 is process management process management means for example uh, there are so many processes that need to be uh, running in the computer so it's a duty of operating system to manage all those processes for example uh, it uses cpu scheduling which means that how a process should run onto the cpu so it's like how to run the program in the cpu number 4 is storage management storage management we will talk about the secondary storage devices which are hard disk etc so it basically focus on how the data is stored in the hard disk so in the form of sectors in the form of tracks so it refers to the file system that is storage system so file system and number 5 is the memory management memory management now storage and memory management are two different things because storage refers to the secondary storage and where in memory management we talk about the main memory that is ram so it's a duty of operating system to load one process in and load second process out of that uh, ram because if p2 wants to perform the function and because of the insufficient space p1 always have to move out now if we talk about the computer system so we must know that the computer system is basically divided into four parts what are these four parts so number 1 we have that is the hardware number 2 is operating system number 3 is a system application application system programs you can say and number 4 is the user so if we depict it in the form of diagram it would be so first of all it comes hardware then there is an operating system then there is a application system program and to access this we have a lot of users users so now we are moving towards the types of operating system so the first one that we have is a batch operating system in batch we use the operator so what is the job of operator operator is used to take the jobs and it's used to group them into different batches so batch means something which have some sort of similarity so in batch operating system we group the task which are similar in nature into different batches and that task are given to the cpu in order to be executed so what happens here there is no direct computer interaction because of operator and which groups them into the batches what are the advantages we can have multiple users who can share the batch operating system and it is easy to manage large work repeatedly because there are so many jobs and when we group them into the batches the jobs re reduce the large works reduce down then thirdly ideal time for the batch system is less which means that once for example we have two batches we group the task into three batches first batch have two jobs second batch have three jobs third batch have first job so when the cpu is going to execute the first batch there are two jobs so the ideal time for the batch system is very less it get reduced the disadvantages are it's hard to debug we cannot know which job or which batch has the problem and it's costly and if one job fails the other have to wait for it to be rectified and corrected so it's used in banking systems and the payroll systems now next is a multi programming operating system multi programming means when so many programs are loaded into the 
main memory so if the main memory have so many programs we call it the multi programming operating system so we we may have so many programs in the main memory but at one time one would be in the execution which will ultimately help better execution of the resources because we already have the processes in the main memory so again and again the input output the fetching is not required because we already have the processes in the main memory so execution of resources is better and advantages are throughput is increased throughput is number of successful executions per unit time so that it throughput is increased with the help of multi programming operating system and reduces the response time why because again going and fetching the program into the secondary memory and loading it in the main memory would take the time and that time is cut down in the multi programming operating systems now we have multi processing operating system multi processing means so many processors we have different processors in this sort of operating system processors means cpu when we use so many processors in order to process the data or in, in order to work on the data that is called multi processing operating system so we have more than one cpu for the execution advantages is that throughput is increased because more than one cpu are working at the same time and if one processor fails by chance the cpu one have some problem we can give the task to another processors and it can process the data so if one processor fails we can proceed with the next processor only disadvantage is that it is complex because we have so many cpus and then we have the time sharing operating system time sharing means like we are given okay for understanding this we need to understand first what is multitasking system multitasking tasking means jobs we have we use a concept of multi programming multi programming for example we have so many programs we have opened up a browser we use text editor we use the excel sheet so these are different programs if we run these parallelly at the same time so we have multiple programs running simultaneously that's a multi programming in the multitasking we have multi programming so here the memory management is very accurate because we are able to distinguish our memory into various tasks we can give the memory to browser text editor excel and we can work at the same time the only disadvantage is that system gets heated because so many processors are working or so many programs are running at the same time so system may get heated and this next is the time sharing time sharing is also called a multitasking the only thing is that we have the time limits we set the time limits in the time sharing protocol for example if i am giving t1 time for the process p1 and once the t1 time is finished the cpu will automatically move to the process 2 in the next time interval so time sharing means every task is given some time to execute after time is over move to the next ta task cpu moves to the next task so the cpu's ideal time gets reduced because after one process it definitely goes towards another process and it helps in better resource sharing and then we have the distributed system where we have so many independent loosely coupled systems or the computers which have their own memory and cpu they are connected to each other with the help of a communication network so what's the advantage every user like if we are user of c3 computers so every user can have the access to the files which are not located in their system so it may have the access to the files of this system so it may have the access to the any files which are located over the network so that is the advantage of distributed system and these computers which are connected to each other via help of communication network are called loosely coupled distributed systems after that we have the network operating system in network operating system we use it in the servers whenever we talk about the servers because servers have to manage the data have to manage so many data and resources very well so it is used in the servers and it allow the shared access to the files printers applications over a private network so we have a server in the center so many users are connected to the server by keeping the server as a center so all the users can have the shared access to the files application programs of other devices so the positive point is all the users are aware of the configuration of their own system for example this is the user one it will have the control to its configuration it will know the configuration as well as the configuration of other devices so that's why it is called the tightly coupled devices so these devices are tightly coupled and this will help the servers to get more stable and 
it will also help in remote server access the only problem is it's very costly and it requires regular maintenance and updating so that may add on to the cost and this is the diagram as it's represented we have the server in the center and all these computers are connected to the server and these computers for example if we talk about c1 c1 user of c1 will also have the access to its configuration and to the configuration of c2 c3 c4 located over this network this is a private small private networks and every user is aware of the configuration of other users as well and at lastly we have the real time operating system real time operating system for example it helps in real time communications real time is it doesn't help no like make us to know about how much time is taken to execute a program so time to process respond time to process any program process an inquiry or instruction and respond to that instruction is reduced which we call the response time for example if i need to process have a process i need to understand the query load it into the ram and then execute give it to the cpu in order to execute so this total time is a response and response it backs like to give the answer so this time is reduced in the real time operating system and because these are very efficient these are used in those systems where there is strict timing strict where is it like point of strict timings we cannot hold on to the time for example in missile systems in air traffic control so these sort of operating systems are used after that we come on to the topic which is storage device hierarchy storage device hierarchy because we have like in computer we have so many storage devices that could be primary storage that could be secondary storage that could be tertiary storage so this is represented in the form of hierarchy i'm going to explain this hierarchy to you whenever we start with the starting this will have the maximum speed minimum access time and maximum cost so anything which is high in speed will have more cost and it doesn't take so much time to access so once we get anything in registers it's very easy to pick the instructions or the data because it's very near to the cpu so as we move down the storage capacity starts increasing for example we have registers cache memory and main memory these are very limited uh, storage we have the ram ram is very less in storage as compared to the hard disk or ssd we use in the computers and as we move up this will have more speed and less access time so these memories registers cache and main memories are the volatile memory means everything is not permanent it's already it's a temporary memory for example whenever the power is on whenever we are using the computer it would stay and once the power is off these are vanished and refreshed the, again to their general instructions and then we have the secondary memory which is a hard disk then with the tertiary memories optical disk and magnetic tapes now why does this have higher cost and this have lower explain with the help of examples for example this we have cpu registers are present in the cpu the registers is the fastest processing unit in the computer so as registers are present in the cpu they have maximum cost minimum storage and maximum speed it works really really fast and then we have the cache memory it could be located in the cpu or at little distance from the cpu as the distance will increase from the cpu the cost will decrease and the storage capacity will increase as well as the speed is going to decrease so this is a storage device hierarchy in the computer system that's all for today's video meet you next time